Welcome back to another episode of Zero to Hero. Once again, this is Pulse Stream Psyche that's just kind of going in to explain what's going on in this video. So this run took place right after the last run that I did, which was 0 BC, and this time around we're going to be unlocking some runes, as well as doing a full run on 1 BC. So get comfortable, and let's get started. So I did a live stream uh, when... Oh, wow. Very nice. I did a live stream for Castlevania. I think I streamed for like just shy of three hours, I think. And do you guys want to guess how much money was made from that stream? Like it really puts into perspective just how big like the disparity is for... If you're like a full-time streamer, I guess. I made... I made a grand total of seven dollars <laughs> from almost three hours like obviously i didn't press oh i guess i could use that i didn't press the ad button you could press it and then it plays an ad for uh for everyone but obviously i know in twitch if you have like a i don't know what twitch premium is called it twitch prime right uh but if you have that you don't see any ads and i think five <laughs> five dollars of that was from a donation Five dollars of that. Five dollars of that. Seven dollars was from a donation. I don't know. If, I don't know if I'll actually like stream for real. It's just that YouTube uh, historically is not really known for uh, for streaming. Like you can do it. In fact, I know if anyone here watches VTubers, I'm pretty sure like I have like three blueprints on me right now. It will be a it will be a shame if I were if I were to die right now and lose them. But I really want a synergy for Nutcracker if I'm actually going to be running this, obviously. And obviously, if you're a, if you're a new player and you don't have the shop refreshes, then it's kind of hard to fish for the item that you want, especially if you're actually going for like a specific build. Yeah, it's funny. Um, so there's a website called Trustpilot that basically goes over like how trusted a site is, like in terms of like a business. That kind of stuff. And if you search up any big company like YouTube, Twitch, uh, Facebook, or Twitter, like it, it's ranked out of five stars. And it's always, I, I watched an Asmon Gold video on this, and it's always like one point something or two point something. Right. Um, I don't think I'm going to go to the Castlevania areas this run because I do want to get the runes. I want the wall rune. And I think I don't get anything if I go to the Castlevania areas. So I'm probably going to Toxic Sewers. Because if you look at it, this is how they want you to progress, right? You get the Vine Rune, which you get from your first run, which gives you access to Toxic Sewers. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you get something there. Yeah, I think we're going to go. The Teleport Rune is next, right? And then you get the Ground Slam, and then you get the Wall one. Let's do Broadsword. That'll be interesting. I definitely don't remember this guy being here. I mean, he doesn't appear at all, like, once you do this little mission, I guess. He's always there? Yeah, flawlessing the, the Scarecrow is, uh, it's gonna take you a while. Um... It took me way longer to flawless the servant's fight than I did the queen. The queen is like it's way easier than the servant's fight. And it's not it's not necessarily because it's harder. It's just that the road to actually getting to the servant's fight is just it's a lot longer cuz you have to no hit the entire lighthouse. It's uh the I can see that the broadsword is just lacking like a little bit of damage enough to knock out everything in one go. The scorpions? Oh my god. Look at that. They do so much damage. It's crazy. I think I have like three to four hundred hours logged in dead cells. Which I know like in the grand scheme of things, if you if you really focus on like the game that you main, like you play only one game, then it's actually not that much. Not that many hours. Because I know some people have like 1,000 hours in Dead Cells or something like that. Which, you know, if you if you really take into perspective, 300 hours is a really long time. 
It's just that if you look at games that's really meant to be played for a long time, uh, like most sandbox games, I want to say, sandbox games, like people are nuts. The, they're, like people play those for a really long time. And I only beat 2BC after like 200 hours. Like it took me a really long time to get over that wall. Uh, I got introduced to the game during the whole uh, I IGN debacle where like some guy plagiarized someone else's review of Dead Cells and then that's when I that's how I got introduced to the game so it's kind of a strange story but the only thing that I guess like the good thing that came out of it is that the game got more publicity that was all the way back in 2018 so we got the punishment shield there <laughs> really uh Really bad plays. But the Punishment Shield is really good. So that's probably the only... Like, this shield can probably take me to the end of this run. If I wanted to. Interesting. Some people are introduced to Dead Cells through other games. Like, the game has changed a lot. I remember when it, when it first launched, 0 BC was really hard. It took me quite a while to beat 0 BC, and then 2 BC was the one I was walled the hardest at. And I think, yeah, 2 BC was the... It was like the biggest wall for players back then. It took me a really long time to, to beat it, but I finally did. And the price gouging here, at least in terms of games, is it's a lot. Because I bought... Because um, if a game is $60 in, in the US, it's $80 over here. $80 Canadian. And the thing is... Oh my god, I forgot I wasn't running the shield. Uh, the thing is... There's also a tax. So, when I bought Elden Ring, I actually... It was closer to, like, $90, $90. Because it was, like, uh... I think the tax accounted for $8 on top of the $80. So, it was, like, $88 in total. It was almost $90. So, it's really, really expensive. And I will say this... I've only bought, I think, three games. I bought three games at full price. At least like $60 full price. Uh, I think I'm gonna just drink this here, just to be on the safe side. Uh, I bought three games. They are, uh, back in 2018, I bought Far Cry 5. I bought Far Cry 5. The second one was Cyberpunk. And the third one was Elden Ring. And looking back, I definitely regret buying Far Cry 5. It's like a, it's an enjoyable game, but I wouldn't say it's like worth <laughs> it's not worth $60. So I can't go up to I I can't go up there, and that is um, that area at the center there is where you need the ground slam rune. So I think the only way forward is just ramparts, right? I mean, I usually just uh, hold out on discounts. At least like on Steam, discounts happen frequently enough that you can uh, a lot of games go on sale. So we'll get the health blast, really important, and I think you're gonna this is gonna lock me for this one too. And then what what about restock? Oh, these require other items. And then you also oh right, so you have to unlock the backpack too. Um well I think these have anti-synergy <laughs> with the build I'm running, but I guess I'll just like not use it. Counterattack? I don't really wanna I don't really wanna lean too hard. I mean like it, this blind faith is useless right now because I don't have a shield. We could just take instinct, it's or actually, did it unlock disengagement? It did. Oh, but it's 200. That is a lot. Okay. And I don't think we do bank. We don't do bank. I know a lot of people don't like the bank. I think, yeah, it's okay in the later stages, but here, especially with only five stats, I, I don't know. I mean, when I was starting out, I thought the Frost Blast was, like, busted. Like, you see how good this is? I don't think that guy can be... Oh, he can be frozen. Okay. Like, you get to freeze things? You get to just keep freezing stuff? That's so overpowered. I can't believe they put mimics everywhere. I actually haven't come across one. At least one that's outside the bank yet. I'm assuming it's pretty rare, right? Because that would be... That's really disruptive. If you could... If you just ran into one, like, once every run, right? So this is probably what, like, a starter build might look like. One mimic outside bank per run. Uh, well, I guess like that's true if you don't 
like if you don't buy from all of the shops, then you'll probably you probably won't encounter one. Well, I think my damage is pretty good now, because seven stats. I mean, seven stats in, on one BC this uh, in ramparts. That's pretty good. I know the I know for a fact that the mimic can actually turn into an elite. <laughs> in which case, you're pretty much screwed. Unless you have like insane DPS too to just kill it, um, it's gonna be really hard for you to deal with. And a big part of when you're playing is to just prioritize enemies. So, like normally I prioritize these things, the Inquisitors, because they can hit you through a wall. I know like some of the unlocks, I think like two or three mutations, they're actually locked behind killing the Mimic, so you... You do have to deal with it if you want some of the mutations. And I can I can teleport now. I don't think Ramparts lead you anywhere, right? Like, I don't think with the teleport rune, it leads you anywhere new. Because the only two bosses it leads to are... Uh, is that and then con uh, Conjunctivius. But Conjunctivius, the door for that is, uh, is on 3 BC. Oh right, I think this is the lore room that uh, that gives you a food item. So that's why you if you're still learning the boss all levels, you definitely want to turn on the lore rooms. Because as you can see from this from this lore room, I literally got a food item that heals me for 50%. I think there's something down there, right? Let's take a look. <laughs> Secret zone. Stun grenade. Mm, I'm pretty lazy, I don't really want to go recycle the food, so I'm just gonna go. Oh, Heart of Ice. This one's really good. I think it's just like, it's a lot more general than a lot of the parry mutations, because it's so easy to get like an enemy that's slowed or stunned, or I guess rooted. Alright, I gotta use the fire grenade first, because it has anti-synergy with my build. Please don't hurt me. I'm gonna freeze you. There you go. Oh my god. Okay, that was on me. That was actually on me. He's gonna dash. Yeah, here's a here's a sneaky thing you can do. You can get in some extra damage by doing this. I don't know why I didn't roll there. One last hit, there you go. I actually don't know where you get corrupted power. I think what I'm dealing with, I definitely want a shield. It just, it makes things a lot easier. That's it. That's the money. All right, let's let's sh let's shake it up then. Make things a bit more interesting. I have taken a lot of damage here. This is probably one of my uh, one of the biomes I'm least familiar with. I want to say. Oh my god. That's the food shop. The food shop's always in the beginning. That's something I found out. I almost feel- I don't feel too confident about the curse chest now. I don't know if I want to do uh, Undying Shores. Because it's not like you get anything. Like, you don't get anything for killing the Scarecrow. You guys are saying it's okay? I think, like, if I was on 2 BC and above, I, I would have definitely have taken it. Okay, so this is the- yeah, this is the Stone Titan. You can parry this. Okay. That was a little rough, but we got there. So you get to the vault and then there's three legendaries. And I think it's gonna be... Oh man. Wave of the Nile is gonna be pretty funny. <laughs> I wanna take this just because it's gonna be so funny to like knock things off the edge. You guys are saying take the sword. I could take the sword too. It's just that uh, like the, the legendary affix isn't exactly that interesting. It's either that or, or this, or Wave of the Nile. 
I mean, balance blade just because the, the weapon itself is pretty solid. I think it's gonna be this one. Okay. I mean, as much as I would love to, to, to like, knock things off a platform. But the damage is so good, and what is this? Oh, right, the cultist. And you can possess yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. You can become a cultist. Dude, I hate these, like, I hate that axe trap right there. That thing is so annoying. The ramming trap there, that one's okay. The shurikens, sure, why not? <laughs> it's, it's like last game we played Brutality with uh, Rhythm Mizuki, and now we're playing Balance Sword on Survival. Mm. Yeah, and by the way, you, uh... Because normally you need the Cultist skin to enter the Undying Shores. And I know... I'm not sure if you can, we can definitely try it. Just two hits, one, two, they're dead. But I quite like the balance play because you kind of have to count how many times you're hitting something for. Oh, you just hit that thing once? This thing I probably have to hit two times? No, three times, okay. Alright, mo moment of truth. We're gonna see if we can enter uh, Undying Shores this way. And looks like I can. Well, I think now that we have Balance Blade, I could definitely go to this now. Sure, let's do it. Oh, wait, I think I- yeah. I think this may have been a bad idea. Because you def you get one of the runes somewhere else. That was it, that was- yeah, you get the Explorer rune there. I mean, it's not exactly a deal breaker, but, you know, it, it would have been nice to have. Uh, I'll definitely keep that in mind in my future runs. I forgot what this was. I do remember there was a puzzle here. I just don't know what that is. Last rating aura. I mean, this could replace ice grenade, honestly. You find the banners with the correct symbols? So you find the two icons of the banners on the map. I'm not sure what it looks like. I definitely remember there being a puzzle like that. Anyone, uh, anyone tried out that new Lord of the Rings game? From what I heard, it actually sold pretty well in the UK, just because the IP is so huge. But it seems like uh, we're, we're entering the age where games just aren't finished at launch anymore. The only bad thing about the, the balance blade is that you have to get in close. That's probably the only bad thing I will say about it. Um, I was going to make uh, videos about Silk Song. I don't know when it's going to be out. I think that was the one that got delayed. Don't know if it's coming out this year. Is it a symbol? Oh, I see it. Okay, so that's what it looks like. I mean, I hope Silk Song is coming this year. I think it was scheduled for the summer. So, because it's, it's delayed, I don't know. Oh, that's the second one. I see it. It's like an upside down R. It's this one. It, I know it has to be this one. Because I know you only get one try at this, right? We got it. And what do you get? You get the cocoon. Okay. I mean, I played I played Hollow Knight, but I didn't do like the... What's it called? Blue Steel or something? It's like the one where you only get one try. Like if you die, then it's you, the run's over. Um, I didn't do that. It, it, because there's actually a lot of achievements in Hollow Knight. Like, there's one where you have to speedrun the game under, like, a certain amount of time. But, I just played- yeah, Steel Soul, that was it. I played the base game, I completed it, and yeah, that was it. But I quite enjoyed it. The aesthetics were nice, uh, the music was great, and I was really surprised that there's a really big following behind Hollow Knight. You could literally make out- make an entire career just out of that one indie game. That's crazy. Have you done the Godthorn? I don't know. I am- I'm not sure what that is. I fought, like, the... The Knight. That was the final boss I fought. Because I didn't- I know there's, like, some DLCs. Something called Pantheon, I think? I didn't do that. Snake Fangs. That's the big one. This weapon, in my honest opinion, is one of, if not the best design weapon in the game. Like, you can do so much with this. I might get a wolf trap, actually. Wolf trap is just so good. And I have so much gold right now. I'll just get a wolf trap. 
I'll definitely be doing Silk Song, but I don't know if I want to be replaying the the uh, the base game. I think I'm gonna go for disengagement. Like, I, if I'm prepping for the later boss levels, this thing's like a staple. What do you think about what doesn't kill me? Um, I think the shield mutations are a little bit interchangeable. Because you have to think about what kind of scenario it, it works in. Because for the shield mutations, if you don't have a shield, it's useless. And if you do have a shield, you actually have to parry. Like, you only get value by parrying. Which I'm, I'm pretty sure you're not gonna do every single time, but... I find the shield mutations are pretty good in uh, late game bosses. Oh my god. Rip. <laughs> that was an interesting fight. <laughs> I kind of panicked there because because I didn't know like the fight was gonna go by so fast. I was like, wait, where's his health bar? But yeah, I guess the moral of the story: just pick up legendary items. Ooh, distillery. Interesting. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't have the ram. I don't have some of the runes. It's because for distillery, because there's a lot of platforming. It's really helpful if you have those. So that is an argument against it. All right. I, so we can't go to the queen area because we don't have the. You have to do a quest for it. All right, I think I'm gonna do it. So, the thing is, if you're if you're going distillery, oh, I just realized I don't have it. <laughs> we could still do it, just because. Yeah, I don't have the I don't have the perk. What's I think it's called masochist. All right, this might end up really horribly. So our first order of business is to find the key. That's basically the structure of this biome. Is that you find the key. Oh, but those guys, the barrel launchers, are gonna be so annoying. Yeah, this is the long corridor with a lot of the barrel launchers. You gotta watch out for this. Right. Uh, I, I am a little bit anxious about the new platforming traps. Some of them are really hard to do. I am definitely not taking that, especially here. I think we did it. I mean, I don't know- oh, this just gets you the bell launcher. So you don't get the blueprint for this, right? You just- you just get it? Like, once you pick this up, it's just added to the item pool? I'm assuming that's what happens. I need you to do this. Thank you. So, to reach the exit, you have to blow open this wall. So you can do this two ways. You either convince one of those guys to blow it up for you, or you go back and get the barrel launcher. Obviously, I just did it like that because it's easier. Sadly, we're gonna leave without the, te the Tesla coil. I think it has like a te We could just keep searching. We, we could still find it. The blueprint already dropped? I'm not sure that's how it works. I'll just take... But I'll take you on your word for that. Um, but yeah, that's that's distillery. It's a little bit more... It's a little tougher because you don't have the wall rune. You don't have the wall climbing rune. Has the coil drops from the weird barrels with legs. Yeah, that... It's the guys that explode, right? Okay. Well, so good so far. So far, so good. Uh, so yeah, so for those worms, you want to get rid of those guys right away. Okay, that was... <laughs> Where's my damage? Okay. Um, yeah, that's 2, two BC. And you even get the starting tubes. So actually, I don't. How does that even work? How does the tubes work? Because for recycling tubes, because it's the one in the beginning where you get a lot more. You get a lot more freedom with your build. I'm not sure how it works because I think you need like the 
the starter weapon upgrades before you can get that. And I think I'm going to end it off here today. Uh, we did two runs, 0 and 1 BC. Awesome. Well, hopefully everyone enjoyed this, uh, this little experiment of me streaming. I'll let everyone know what I'm streaming next. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you being here. Have a nice rest of the day or night. I'll see you guys in a bit.